Let us find out the self conducting of a long solenoid. So this is a solenoid, which is a very long, and let's say the length of this solenoid is small l. And the area of cross sections of the solenoid, let's say it is capital A. And the radius of this solenoid, let's say it is small r. Okay. So as you can see here, the two ends of the solenoids, they are connected to a cell through a tapping key. Alright, so when this key is on, a current I starts flowing in the coil. And this current will produce what? Will produce a magnetic field inside the coil. And we know the magnetic field, which is produced by the, I mean the magnetic field inside the coil, we have done it before. It is given as B equal mu naught N I. Okay, where mu naught here is known as what? Permeability of free space. And this small n, it is the number of turns per unit length. Number of turns per unit length mean, suppose this solenoid has got capital N number of turns. So, small n will be capital N, capital N upon small l, which means the number of turns per unit length. Okay. So, if that is the case, then I will write B is equals to mu naught. Instead of N, I'll write N and then upon L like this. So, this is the magnetic field. Okay. So, if this is the magnetic field, then what is the magnetic flux which is linking with the coil? Okay, so we know this magnetic flux is written as B into A. Or I can say phi is equals to, instead of B, I'll write mu naught, N, I, L, and then A. Okay, okay. Now this magnetic flux, it is actually the flux which is linking only with one tons of the coil. Now, suppose, right, how many turns of the coils are there in this case? There are capital N number of turns. So, when there are capital N number of turns, then the magnetic flux for that total length of the coil will be, right, capital N times VA. Or we can say here, right, you have to write N. Or phi is equals to mu naught N square, N, N mean N square. I A upon L. Alright, this is the magnetic flux. Okay, so this is my equation 2. Alright, so our aim here is to find out the self inductant. So, what is the self inductant? If you remember, this phi is equals to Li. So, therefore, the self inductance of the coil. It will be phi upon i or l is equals to now how much is phi your phi is mu naught n square i a upon l all right so we have i in the denominator here so you multiply with i so this i down i up cancel so your self induction will become mu naught n square a upon Okay, so this is the equation for the self inductance of a solenoid. Alright, now this equation, it is true only for an air core solenoid. This is true for air core solenoid. Okay, so now. Suppose inside the solenoid, I insert, you know, an iron core having a relative for me ability, let's say, mu r. So, then the self-inductant in that case will be different. And for that, we will write the self-inductant as when there is, you know, an iron core inside the solenoid, this formula becomes mu naught mu r n square 
A upon L. Okay, so this is the equation number four, which is the self inductant of, you know, of an iron core, you can say. Okay, all right. So looking at this equation, if you look at this equation three, we can see that this self inductant depends upon the number of tons in the solenoid. Which means when the number of tons is increasing, then the self inductant of the solenoid also will increase. The second factor is that this self inductant it is also directly proportional to the area of cross sections of the solenoid. So when this area is large, the self inductance will be large. When this area is small, the self inductance will be small. And the third dependent here is small l. The self inductance is inversely proportional to the length of the solenoid. Which means, if you have a very long solenoid, then the self inductance Right? In that case, will be less. But if you have a short solenoid, then the self inductant will be large. Okay, so this is about the self inductant of a long solenoid.